My dear friends in Christ Jesus, good morning. There is a story about a wine and liquor merchant who during Christmas time offered a bargain sale of wine and liquor in order to enable the people to gather after the midnight mass and have a noche buena. He advertised that on the morning of December 24, at 9 o'clock in the morning, he will be opening the store for people to come and buy liquor at a bargain price. On that day, at 8.30 in the morning, a line of people could be seen going to the store around two blocks away. When nine o'clock came, a middle-sized man went in front of the line and the people were angry. They cursed him because they have been waiting for one hour. And here comes the late comer and wanted to be at the hand, the head of the line. So, the people led him away and brought him at the end of the line. But then, this person went back to the head of the line and the more the people were enraged, they literally drag him and placed him at the end of the line. Now when this man got up, he said, enough is enough. If you do this again to me, I will not go and open this door for you. My friends, the people knew that the owner of the store would sell them wine and liquor at a bargain price, but they did not recognize him when he came. That's why they pushed him away. Israel was a nation chosen by God, and they knew long before from the revelation, from the scriptures that they had in their hands, that the Redeemer of the world would come and liberate men from their slavery. But when our Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, they did not recognize him. So much so that today, Around 2,000 years after the birth, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the people of Israel are still waiting for the Savior to come. My friends, we could be like the Israelites of today. We know that there is a God who commanded us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. But then, have we recognized the image of Christ in the people around us, especially those who are in need of our help and assistance? Have we discerned God's will, will in the things and the events that happened to us? Did we try to unravel the reason God's will 
in this scenario where we find ourselves to be in, like this pandemic COVID-19. Have we read the sign of the times and try to understand that nothing happens by accident. Everything that happens happens according to God's own plan. The relationship between God and Israel has been likened to the relationship between man and woman in marriage. Just as in marriage, when the woman says to the man, you will be my husband and I will be your wife. And the man would also say to the woman, you will be my wife and I will be your husband. Now, in the Old Testament, which is also called the Old Covenant, an agreement, a contract, just like in marriage, there was an exchange of promises between God and his people. And God said, you will be my people and I will be your God. And this image of God's relationship with his people illustrated in the imagery of a married couple extends up to the New Testament. When St. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, said, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loves his church. Just as the old covenant was the love story between God and the Israelites, so also the New Testament is a covenant between Christ and his people, the church. My dear friends, the ideal love of a husband to his wife and the ideal love of a wife to her husband have been a beautiful thing and have been immortalized in architecture and in literature. Perhaps most of us have seen the picture of the Taj Mahal, which is considered as one of the seven wonders of the world. This is a monument, a tomb erected by Emperor Shah Jahan of India to his beloved wife. It took 20 years to construct the building, 8,000 laborers and 1,000 elephants. It stands 240 feet above the ground. And around 400 years after this was constructed, this mausoleum have weathered the passage of time and is a living memorial to the emperor's love for his wife, Muhammad's Mahal. And the ideal love of a wife to a man, to her husband, is immortalized in the beautiful poem of Elizabeth Browning in her poem, How Do I Love Thee? 
She stated in her poem, How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love you to the depth, the width, and the height my soul can reach. And towards the end of the poem, she wrote, And if so God choose, I shall but love you better after death. Usually, a husband and a wife in their marriage vows pledge their love for each other with a limit until death, until death do us part. But the poetess Elizabeth Browning wrote that her love was limitless and death which usually terminates the love we husband and wife has been an image of the continuity of her love for her husband that if God chose she would love him better even after death. So my friends, God, God's love for us is greater than the love of the emperor to his wife and greater than the love of Elizabeth for her husband. But there is a difference in the love of God to his people. Because the wife of the emperor and Robert Browning, the husband of Elizabeth, hindi mahirap mahalin. It's easy for them to love their spouse, their partner, because their spouses reciprocated their love for them. That's why it was easy for them to love and return. Muhammad's Mahal loved the emperor so much so that he, she died while she was delivering the 14th child. She loved her husband to be able to bear him 14 children. And Elizabeth was loved by his husband, her husband, Robert, that she preferred to incur being disowned by the father in order to marry Robert. But it, it is not so with God's love for his people. While we usually love for a reason, reasons which are pleasing to us. Like we love another because he or she is handsome or beautiful, because he or she is intelligent, he is responsible. We love others because of a reason pleasing to us. But real love means that in spite of the defects of the beloved, we continue loving that person. He or she will be able to say, even if you don't love me anymore, I will still love you. Such was the situation between God and his people. So to illustrate how much God loved his people, he commanded his prophet Hosea to take as a wife a prostitute. During those times and even until now, prostitutes are looked down by society to be dregs lagod sa katilingdan. And if we have to quote 
the prophet Isaiah. He said, I am a worm and no man, a prostitute loses her dignity, her position in society. So, God's people who turn their backs to God, from God is like a prostitute, adoring false gods, adoring the world more than he or she would love God. And often, God was welcoming, calling back Israel. And how, for example, in Matthew chapter 23, verse 35, Christ was quoted to have said, O Jerusalem, how often would have I wanted to gather your children like a mother hen gathering her brood under his, its wings, but you would not allow me. So God has been offering for us the water of living waters in order to quench our thirst. But the people abandon God and look to the calling of the flesh just in the, was stated in the second reading. They look for water, not from the fountain Christ has offered, but the soap, the sea water to quench its thirst. And like the sea water, the more you drink, the more you get thirsty. God loved us not because our love for him would matter much for him. God is a perfect God. He does not need anything more to complete, to complete his perfection. Just as what St. Thomas said, the sun retains its brilliance even if man would close his eyes and seek the darkness. That it does not matter whether we love God or not, but it is for our own sake that has, God has loved us. And then, after Hosea took the prostitute to be his wife, after some time, his wife turn again to prostitution, running after her lovers and begetting daughters, which, like her, turned into prostitutes. And when this, his wife came back to him, God commanded Hosea to take her back and be his wife again. So such is the nobility of God's love. No matter how we have sinned, He does not give us up. He invites us, He calls us, and like in the Gospel of today, learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. He invites us to love Him, to love our neighbor, in the manner that Christ has loved us. Some people have answered this call. We have the frontliners who attended to the sick, not because doing so would profit them, but because the patients are in need of help. And these people have sacrificed the safety of their own health and sacrificed 
the intimacy of the members of their home. A moving post could be seen in the internet about a little girl just five years old. Maybe in former times before the COVID-19. It was her custom that when she would see her father coming, going home, she, would, she went to him, embraced him. But then, the situation of these times has been critical. So she cannot go to meet her father immediately. So the post pictured the child at the doorway of their home and the father standing at the gate of their house. So when she saw her father coming home, she would just make a motion, opening her arms to welcome her father. But then, she could not do so, so she did it in actions. After stretching and opening her arms to re receive her father, then she crossed herself, her arms around herself, imagining that she was embracing her father and her father embracing her. That before the father would use to carry her and dance with her and imitating that action before with cross arms before her breast she would sway swing from left to right perhaps imagining that she was being embraced by her father while the father would dance with her so as the gospel said that god has revealed these things to little ones and then in this posting in the internet a little girl understood the needs of the times that she would have to sacrifice her intimacy with her father because of this situation and because of the need of other people. So my friends, it's not easy to follow in the footsteps of our Lord, but we have been invited by our Lord, nonetheless, to follow him, to take up our cross daily and follow him. So if we get tired along the way, when we feel trying to give up, then Christ gave his invitation as we have heard in the gospel of today. Come to me if you are tired and overburdened and I will give you rest. Christ promised us to help us, to give us a rest for a while so that after regaining our strength, we may continue following him and he will be by our side to comfort and help us. Amen.